Well, everybody, welcome to our next session with the one and only Richard Bradshaw. Um, fun story, fun little side quest through history. Um, the first time that Richard and I actually legitimately shared a stage was in 2013 at SlendingPomp Boston, where we were both standing next to each other next to a stage. Not that we were both on stage at the same time like we are right now. Um, we were giving lightning talks uh, at SlendingPomp Boston. I was giving a talk and he was giving a talk and we were just you know, from like just swapping pleasantries beforehand and geeking out. And then fast forward to now, uh, here we are sharing a stage again, uh, 11 years later. So very cool to be back. And just a quick intro for those of you who somehow don't know Richard. Um, I, everything I'm about to say is true. And, and I believe it wholeheartedly, but Richard is a true driving force in the software testing and quality domain. Uh, he wears many hats all times, including tester, automator, speaker, writer, teacher, strategist, leader, and my favorite, and I believe this to be the utmost truth, a friendly human. And so um, let's give it up for Richard. He's going to talk about the fear factor. And this is going to be pretty interactive. So I'm going to stick around. Richard's going to be here as well. And we'll just see where we, where this takes us. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Dave. That was actually my first ever talk, um, I, if oh, I, I remember did. correctly. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'd done a 99 second talk, but that was my first longer than that. So that was like five minutes, if I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. And yeah, then after that, yeah, carried on. So yeah, awesome. All right, welcome everyone. Um, yeah, so Appitools asked me to do something a little bit more interactive. Um, uh, so I, I'm gonna try and see what happens. So I've got a few questions around AI. And I think today has been an amazing session so far where we've got to hear you know, about new tools, new opportunities. We've got to hear about you know, some of the directions that we think AI might be heading there. Um, but when I was asked what to do, I thought, well, I'm really excited about AI on this side of me, but then this side of me is like terrified, <laughs> right? So I thought instead of embracing this side, which is, you know, super excited, little kid in the sweet shop going, oh, give me more tools, I love tools. I thought this side might be worth a play where I'm a little bit skeptical. I'm a little bit concerned, I'm a little bit worried. Uh, and I thought what we would do is we would ask you all um, kind of how you're feeling about it from a, from a fair side. And we will be basically, I'll just openly discuss it in the responses, try and get you all going in the chat um, and yeah, see what we can come up with. And then I've promised um, Appitools that I will write up um, an article after this session where I will take some of the most common fears that got mentioned and try and, you know, make us all feel a little bit better about it. Or maybe I'll double down on it and say, yeah, you should be scared. Why not? <laughs> that's, that's where we are. Um, so. The way we're going to do this, I'm going to show go for the first question. Um, so we'll put this one on the screen. So um, that's not the first one. This is the first one. Um, so basically, a yes or no. I'm going to give you all a few minutes to answer this. If you're not used the Slido before, you can use that URL or you can use this URL. Um, and yeah, I'm just asking you all, do you have any fears about AI in testing? Uh, while you all do that, I'll uh, maybe I'll ask Dave. Dave, you got any fears? Yes, uh, man. I have many fears, uh, some of them about AI. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm constant, like having been in, in positions in different career paths in my life, um, I've, I've seen the consolidation and, and fundamental shift of responsibilities of what people can and can't do change. And so it's like seeing the writing on the wall and it's like I was a network engineer. I mentioned this in the panel, but it was like this kind of shaving of uh, down to the stilling down to just a handful of people that need to be highly skilled and have amazing tools to help them do a lot of things that used to require a lot more people to do. Um, I was starting to wonder that some, you know, I know that's the conversation for developers. I was a developer up until recently switching to be developer relations. Um, but I started to wonder, I'm like, we could, are we becoming more efficient or are just some jobs going to be rendered redundant? I don't know. Um, I think time will tell. And I also think that there are some things that are just really custom and bespoke and legacy applications that like still need people um, who have this really exquisite specialized knowledge that's just tribal knowledge. So a lot of that stuff's not gonna go away. Every every place where there's like inefficiencies and irrational thinking and you know cargo movements of, uh, of, of code, that stuff's probably fine, but there are other fringes that they will get eaten away quickly, I think. And um, But I, I think it's gonna be interesting I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I like the description. It's like on one <laughs> shoulder is this and on the other shoulder is that. Yeah. I, um, I, I largely just want to, every time someone talks about that and like whatever the most popular zeitgeist and opinion is, I want to always step back and be like, that's, that's great. I'm glad that there's interest and movement and, and a conversation there. 
but I kind of step back to the practical aspects. It's like, we all still want to solve problems with technology because it enables us to do things we couldn't do before. Um, I want to make sure we're not losing sight of, of the reason and the purpose of, of doing it. And so, and making sure those things connect because it's too easy to just like lose your footing when you start thinking about the shiny stuff and the fear and like, and you don't come back to like, right, but I still have to like, I'm still an e-commerce platform and I still need to ship a product. Like, you know, whatever the problem is. Um, Absolutely. So that's kind of, and so that's where it's at for me. Well, my answer is obviously yes. Otherwise I wouldn't be running this session, but yeah, if we can have a look <laughs> at the results, let's see what the results are coming in. I can see them backstage, but let's have a quick look, see what they come in as. So um, 60, 40. Um, I would love to hazard a guess that I reckon, I don't know if a lot of people new to the industry might be less fearful. Um, some of the results that I've seen about the next questions might be the case, but yeah, for me, I'm only I'm fearful from an element of I have met thousands of testers and if I sit down with them or actually I, I quite like the previous the panel session when I if I mention the word tester I mean someone wearing the testing hat right so it doesn't have to be a role doesn't have to be a dedicated title I mean someone who does some testing and I've met so many of them when I ask them why did you test that or why did you automate this or why have you done that and sometimes people can't explain it. Like I run crazy exploratory tests and I sometimes don't know why I've done it. I can't think of that answer. And that's what I worry about when it comes to like the use of AI, especially this, how do we know it's done something of value or how are we training it if we can't explain it ourselves? I find that bit fascinating. So interesting to see the 6040. All right, so I'm gonna quickly move on. Actually, I think we'll just keep showing the results because I think everyone's answered at once. So we're gonna move on to this one um describing it in one word so i should have asked dave first but without cheating dave what would be your without looking one word? It. <laughs> for, for, for my feelings uh complicated complicated <laughs> nice i think mine is like i'm not sure like hmm like scrutiny is probably the word that jumps out at me like i'm just yeah i'm really keen to see what the see how it would work but let's see what we've got in here and see what people again if you want to share in the comments if you wrote the one of these words in the chat please share why you're feeling that because that would be awesome for everyone in there as well so we've got the ones we said on this shoulder excited awesome uh, i'm interested in it i'm hopeful i think hopeful is a very interesting choice there like i think a lot of people have you know we're hearing some incredible things today. Like I know Athletools is um, autonomous testing, you know, that the, we've been given a little rumor about that. But from what I've seen in the industry of people doing that, I'm hopeful on that technology. I think it, I've often in my training, I talk about my automated test being like a little robot, little robots like Richard's little robot army. And I send them off to run all the tests that I've told them to. And I feel like some of this autonomous work that I'm hearing about is like an extension of my little robot army. Um, so I think that makes me, again, hopeful that they can do as good enough job as what I trained my little army to do. Um, but yeah, then we've got some of the other sides. So we've got awesomely scary. That's a great, that's a great, <laughs> a great example there. Unclear on its capabilities. I think there was an um, incredible talk earlier with all the, the statistics in it. I have a rough idea about how a lot of the Gen AI stuff works and neural networks, but like I, I don't know the finer details and that scares me a little bit. Um, uncertainty, scary, um, anxious. Yeah, definitely anxious is a good choice. Um, a wonderful combination. I think, yeah, absolutely. AI and testing could do incredible things together. I think a moving target's very good. I think you mentioned this, Dave, in, your, um, in that panel that, you know, about the five years and the, or the five days, like we are mm -hmm. still so new, like the shit, like I, I keep a close eye on open AI and the speed that they are shipping things like it's, it's terrifying. Um, so I think there's that side of it where, you know, we, I don't even think we're touching that, you know, like think of an iceberg. I think we're only looking at the top of what's coming. I think gen AI has suddenly arrived and become this thing everyone's suddenly aware of but I don't know what the academics are working on that suddenly might become mainstream, you know, in six, in six months time. And I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> I agree. 
So I think we'll jump to the main guts of it. So yeah, those, those are really interesting things in there. So we're just going to go to the last question, which is um, describing people's fears. So this is the one I would <laughs> like you to. Do. <laughs> this is the one I would like you to do in the chat. So if you do have fears in the chat, please just describe them a little bit. Elaborate a lot more than you could on Slido. Uh, and we're going to have a look at some of these because I've got some that I asked the same question on LinkedIn last week and there were some incredible results in there. I also got some private messages from people who were very concerned in some aspects and didn't want to put down publicly. Um, so I'll, let's have a look at some of these. So developers taking over our jobs, it, pff, that's already happening in some cases. <laughs> um, we heard in the panel that that can be the case. Again, context matters when it comes to testing and I think some contexts a developer who has basic testing knowledge can probably do a good enough job. I think good enough is always a, a thing that, you know, we if it's defined, it's possible. Um, the missing bugs, I think that's going to be a huge one only if we go down this route of, I think a lot of people think that AI is just going to be like, hey, Richard's gone. Like, I wish I had some sort of filter now, just replace me with some cyborg. <laughs> um, like, I think they, they think like the person just checks out and then the, um, the you know this this ai is just suddenly in their place and i think again when we had the silver bullet automation period i think people thought that was going to be the case yet now we're in this automation hell in a lot of companies where checks are failing all the time they're incredibly brittle you come in you spend all your day fixing broken automated checks the build goes green you go for your lunch you come back it's red again Right. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's actually a very good thing if you've got very good tests. If if those tests are very well designed, that's what you would want to be happening. But they're not fixing themselves. They don't know the domain. They don't know what's right or wrong. So we're currently re-educating them. So this idea that we were going to be replaced has not happened. If anything, I think teams probably have more S tests than they used to have testers. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I don't think it's coming for our jobs. Um, but I do think there will be an element of certain low-hanging fruit probably can be automated. I think if we're just worried about a UI behaving as a UI, maybe an autonomous AI can do that. But what it can't do is under the hood. So I was chatting with a tool vendor yesterday um, and they were showing at me crawling the UI and doing all this wonderful stuff, clicking buttons, filling in forms, looking for broken links. It was great. And it was specifically testing a login page. And I was like, okay, that's a great, that's a login page. And it uh, it had the credentials and it logged in. And he went, oh, look, it can log in. I was like, yeah, but does it work? And he goes, what do you mean, does it work? I was like, well, well, you've logged in, but does the system work? And he was like, well, I'm logged in. I was like, yeah, but did it just log everyone in? Is it actually, is it actually going down the stack, encrypting passwords, ciphering them, whatever all the fun, you know, security stuff that's going on? Or is there just some code in the API that's just going ah, oh, that came from a status code in the in an IP address in the UK, log that person in, right? It won't know. And I think that's going to be some of the challenges that we're going to have with it. On the surface, it will do stuff and it will click things and it will call APIs, but I think it's just going to struggle to know. And I think that's where skilled testers or critical thinkers, problem solvers, testers who understand heuristics and oracles and how to design good tests, those mm. skills are going to become invaluable because if the AI is capable of going off and running thousands of thousands of tests, which I believe that's what's going to happen, as Dave, um, as Stephen said, who's processing all those results? Who's analyzing all that information to decide if it's good or bad? Yeah, we know we joked about giving it to another AI. Of course we could, right? But then who's testing that AI? <laughs> so I think what I'm hopeful of we get to is I don't think it will come for our jobs. If anything, I'm I'm hoping it comes along more as a superpower. I'm hoping it gives me the ability to do the work of 20, right? As in, I don't want to be sitting there designing low-hanging fruit. I want to be thinking about critical problems. So if I can push that off to an AI or a bot or an autonomous thing and have it return me, you know, staggering amounts of data in minutes, it's still probably going to be quicker for me to process all that information than it would have been for me to do all that low-hanging fruit. And I, I'm hoping that becomes the case. And I mentioned in the comments, I think the tool that will win is the tool that makes that really easy. So the tool that presents that information in a really easy way where I can go, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. 
I think that's going to be kind of the, you know, like Apitals of its accept and reject um, screenshots. I think it has to get to that kind of layer. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, yeah, sorry, Dave, I spoke for a long time there. But, yeah, lots of things there about taking our jobs. And I think things no, that it will miss. Great. Yeah, that's things what, that it will what... miss. Um, the learning curve. Stephen mentioned that in the panel. If you didn't see the panel, I think the learning curve, again, it starts with the basics. What is AI? What is MI? You know, what is what is a neural network? Kind of what is AI? What's machine learning? What are some of the basic concepts that we need to grasp? I think everyone will have to go through that journey because otherwise it's going to be very hard to trust it or analyze it or try and interpret how it got to its generated answer. Um, I almost wonder though, I wonder though if like that over time that will change, like things will become so commoditized and abstracted. Like the fact that like right now everyone's talking about AI, but at some point it's just like, you won't even need to know because maybe everything will have it. And it's like, it's like, what problems does it help you solve? How reliable is it? What are the use cases that back it up? What's the data? And to the point where it's like right now, because it's bleeding edge and on the front, we need to know those things. But at some point it's going to be, maybe, maybe we don't eventually need to know those things. It's just, what are the tools that actually give you those superpowers, as you said? And then it's just like, you could just show up with the skills that you need to learn over time, the art and science of being a tester. And now it's like, you just have these amazing tools that you used to have to choose almost like, do I want to incorporate automation into my practice or not? And now it's just like, I'm a tester and I have this sup the super suit of armor I can wrap around me that's, that is, you know, happens to be AI. And then the future, it may maybe just won't even be called that. It'll just be something else. And I think that might be okay. I think that the danger there is, you know, again, the trusting of the tool. I think there's going to have to be some sort of standardized community score or some sort of review that says we can start to trust the results of this tool or, we're all trained to be just skeptical from the off. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, I think, again, we're not going to know at some point right now. It's a marketing hype phrase, right? As soon as that's not the case, then they mm -hmm. won't talk about that anymore. Uh, we've only got a minute left, and I've uh, just seen a call for questions, so I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to answer Chris's question, um, or maybe Dave should read the question out, or can it be put on the screen with some sort yeah, of magic? Oh, look Oops, at that. So there we go. Double click. Um, you mentioned that the... Testing the AI, what sort of checks and balances would you impose? To be honest, Chris, I actually don't know. What I do know, if I was on a system and it gave me a result right now on any system we test, I have a way from being in that team and that domain of knowing whether that answer is good or not. So I currently know, because I know the system, I know the algorithms, I know the rules that we coded, that I asked for a mortgage and the bank said no. Whereas with this, I think we need to get better at analyzing and interpreting um, the, the tools itself. So Tarek mentioned about, I can't remember what he called it now, but about how these AIs are gonna have to start explaining how they got to that result. I think that's going to be critical in how we test any AI system. If we treat it as a big black box, which most neural networks are, we are going to really struggle. And then you come into the problem of ethics and data. Um, so we're kind of out of time. The other things that got mentioned on LinkedIn was things like data security of data, the sharing of data, I think those are critical as well. Um, and I'll definitely be sure to include them. And um, yeah, that was kind of it really, a bit rapid, cool. but I will yeah. answer these questions in the article if Apitals can share them to me. That's amazing. <clears throat> well, thank you, Richard. Thanks everyone for contributing, making this interactive. This was a lot of fun. Um, just to wrap up, um, just uh, wanted to tie this in that we talked a lot about AI and all these things, obviously, because it's future of testing, but just wanted to mention Apple Tools is employing AI and we can make your tests easy to create, execute and maintain. So if you haven't yet be, haven't done yet, please be sure to visit the booth and speak to our test specialists there. Do yourself a favor and talk to them, even if you just want to have a chat with some friendly, fun, cool people. Um, so thanks everyone for joining and we will see you in the next session. Bye everyone. Bye.